Do you want to use your PC building skills to earn some money? Then it's good that you've come across this video because today I'm going to be going over the four easy steps to sourcing, building and selling your computer for quite a bit of profit. In these four steps, I will be covering brainstorming, sourcing, building and posting of the PC as well as each individual key point that you want to be looking out for in each step. And hopefully by the end of this video, you guys are going to know how to easily transfer your skill into actual solid money. So without dragging on for too long, let's get right into it. So the first step we have is actually brainstorming about the PC. So when you're brainstorming about this PC, you're going to want to remember three key points. Those are budget, type of PC and best parts to use. So when you're thinking about this PC, you're going to want to think about your profit margins, namely how much you want to spend on this computer and how much you want to get back from it. Now, I personally recommend that you go for a 25% profit margin. However, getting profit margins as large as 50 to 75% is not completely unheard of, but it's pretty tricky. When you're building this computer, you're going to think about what type of computer is it going to be? Is it going to be a workstation? Is it going to be a retro PC? Is it going to be a gaming PC or is it going to be a budget PC? Now, these choices are all up to you. However, I would recommend that you consult your budget and local ecosystem to make sure that you will be able to sell this PC. For this part, I'd recommend that you look at your local buy and sell groups such as eBay, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist to have a look which PCs are selling the most often and for the highest prices. As for parts, I recommend going with Intel and Nvidia, but Ryzen is still an okay choice. Now as strange as this sounds, there is still a method to my madness. For the most part, Intel and Nvidia have got the easiest to remember naming schemes as well as the most linear ones, meaning that people who see them are much more likely to remember which part is good and which part is bad. For example, you're going to know that the i3 is worse than an i5 and the i7 is better than an i5, as well as Nvidia being a lot more linear with the naming schemes so that you know that a GTX 570 is better than a GTX 470. This is in contrast to AMD's slightly more complicated APU and FX series processors names. This is also helped by the fact that Intel and Nvidia generally have a much higher market share when compared to AMD as well. Now the reason why I say that the Ryzen series of processors is okay is because of the fact that they also follow a very linear naming scheme of Ryzen 3, 5 and 7. Because these numbers are actually, as I said, linear, it's easier to know that you know an Ryzen 3 is worse than a Ryzen 5 and a Ryzen 7 is better than a Ryzen 5. These very subtle tricks are the easiest way to actually get people to notice your PC and to remember how good it actually is in comparison to other PCs. Having got that part out of the way, let's get into sourcing. For the second step, we have sourcing. Now for this step, we actually think about which parts we want to use in this PC and where we want to get them from. Now for each region, there are different marketplaces where you can buy and sell stuff. For Europe, we have Facebook Marketplace and OLX. For North America, I would recommend Craigslist and LetGo and for Australia, I would recommend Gumtree. Speaking from experience, I can tell you guys that definitely one of the best places you can go to right now is Facebook Marketplace, especially in Europe because there are so many good deals to find there on graphics cards, motherboards and processors. But for the most part, I would recommend that you guys just keep your eyes open for any good deals on any sites that you can find. One of the parts that I can most highly recommend are i5s and GTX 970s. These two PC parts give you the most bang for your buck as well as them being the best parts to actually put into a PC which is going for around 500 to 600 euros. For your processor I'm going to recommend that you go below 150 euros and for your graphics cards that you keep below 200 euros. These price points are the sweet spots for each part because most of the time any processor or graphics card that costs more than 300 euros is highly unlikely to actually resell in a PC for the same price that you bought it for. However, the general margin for prices for each generation of GPU are 400 series and 500 series mostly sell for under 50 euros, um, 600 and 700 series usually sell for under 100 and 900 series generally sell for under 150. Unfortunately, I don't have the same sort of prices for processors or AMD series graphics cards because most of the time their prices fluctuate quite wildly and it's hard to get an accurate price for each generation. Now for step number three, we have building. Since most of you guys probably have at least a basic understanding of how to build a PC, there's not too much to talk about in this step. 
left. I will however say that if you are going for a hard drive or an SSD in this build that you go for a brand new one because older ones or ones that have already been used in a different PC have most of the time got compromised read and write speeds and are slower than they were when they were brand new. I will also recommend that you use around 8 gigabytes of RAM minimum for a gaming PC uh, around 4 gigabytes of RAM for a basic home use office PC and 16 plus gigabytes of RAM for a workstation. Otherwise guys, just make sure you take the normal precautions such as grounding yourself before touching any of the PC parts and making sure not to drop any of the PC parts as well and you should be fine. Now for the final stage, we have posting. This stage is actually more of an English lesson than it is a PC building lesson. There are specific ways of writing about your PC to gain the most amount of interest. You're going to want to be a lot more casual when you're writing your description as a more professional description makes you look like you are unwilling to bargain as well as a more professional description makes it look like you specifically made this PC for selling which many people actually dislike when they are buying a PC. The best description you can really write for your PC is to use plenty of adjectives and adverbs as well as listing all the parts and specs that you have in the PC and you're also going to want to mention all of the features of your PC such as if it's overclockable or if there's more expansion slots for more RAM or if there's even a chance of actually putting in a better hard drive or processor. You're also going to want to make sure that the pictures you take of the computer are of good quality but they don't look too much like they are done by a professional. Again, if they look professional, if they look like they're done by a professional, it makes it look like you're too private for discussion or bartering which is of course not what we're going for in this situation. Finally, when you are going to sell the PC, make sure that you meet in a nice open space or if you meet at your own house, make sure that there's someone else in the house with you. This is just to make sure that you don't get ripped off or even worse, mugged. And generally, it puts both you and the buyer at ease to know that there are other people around you to make sure that you have some degree of security. Another tip is to stay firm with your price and make sure that you don't vary too much from the original price. For example, if you put it out for 600 euros, make sure that you don't sell it for 400 euros. And generally look out for any unsavory characters which you think could be a little bit dangerous or not pay the full price. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable and I hope that you guys go on and watch some more of my other videos. If you did like it, please leave a like, maybe even consider subscribing. If you didn't like it, then obviously leave a dislike and I hope to see you guys in the next video.